Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Sisbidi, a true dead, and welcome back to Fallout 2. Well, last time, we learned a whole lot about Vault City and Gecko, and the tense situation that exists between the two. But, there's a whole bunch of very important information hidden inside the Vault of Vault City that I need to get my hands on. So, we need to make these places cooperate in some way or another. Now, I was planning to run down to Broken Hills to pick up some uranium. Thank you very much for the comments who let me know that when Harold was saying, Oh yeah, the reactor's running a bit efficiently, we're burning through uranium nice and fast, that doesn't actually mean I need to go and get him some uranium. He can handle that by himself. I've got the part, that's all I need for now. So thanks, you've just saved me a very long trip. But I also remembered something else, which is, I did some scouting around Gecko, so I can probably just go and turn that into Stark immediately for some nice easy XP. Here we go, back to Stark, and good news, I have indeed surveyed the area around Gecko for you. It turns out that, prepare yourself for a shock here, it's completely empty wasteland. So we just download information onto Pit Boys, lovely. I'm presuming that is, yep, nice, easy 350 XP, lovely. And also, $300, great. And even better, he's got some more work for me, actually. So we need someone to travel to the NCR. Lately, I've been hearing reports the Republic may be building up military strength. True or not, I need someone to plot a route to the NCR and report back. Ah, they're potentially thinking about a counterattack, but if they are, bad idea. The NCR is much stronger than you because... I strongly suspect they're running a black flag operation pretending to be raiders right now. But go on then, if you can actually put the NCR on my Pip-Boy, that'd be great. So go there, figure out what the route looks like, come back once I've entered the city. Lovely. Ah yes, and one more thing before we actually leave. Sulik, apparently we need to specialise you a little bit. So, uh, combat control, thank you to the people who let me know about this. So, uh, custom commands for Sulik in combat. Here we go. If you're going to use Burst, be careful not to hit me. Spot on. Don't care so much about Vic. Blur him away if you need to. And you know what? Let's just say be absolutely sure you won't hit me. That seems like a good idea. Except for some reason, that one's not available. Right, I'm not sure why I can't tell him to not be absolutely sure he won't hit me, but maybe he doesn't like me that much. Ah, maybe it's a personality thing. Because I also can't tell him to attack the weakest person. Maybe it's just that Sulik as a person wouldn't do that because he'd consider it dishonourable or something. Right, back out to the world and do I actually have... Uh, hang on, is the NCR actually here? Yes, the NCR is now on the map. It might already have been on the map, I can't remember. So, head south from Vault City and uh, Broken Hills is a long way down. New Reno is actually pretty close by. Reading is... Uh, Reading's actually a fair way further north. So, possibly at some point I should go back over to, yeah, Modoc and then the Den. Because I need to find that ghoul who I was told about in Gecko. That feels like a very small thing. You know what? I'm not going to go back to that side of the world in this corner of the map until I've got that car part. So I need to find a super toolkit to trade for the fuel cell whatever -er, And then I can go back over in that direction. But yeah, if that's Broken Hills, then... Okay, so the NCR is a lot further south, got it, but actually, hang on, the NCR is just Shady Sands. Now, from Shady Sands, I actually know the location of Vault 13, having played Fallout 1, because Vault 13 would actually just be extremely close by. You know, Vault 15 over here somewhere, and Vault 13 somewhere in this part of the world. I don't really feel like that's cheating, by the way, because, yeah, I imagine most people who've played Fallout 2 will have played Fallout 1. But maybe I'm not supposed to know the NCR is actually Shady Sands, but I do because of New Vegas. Anyway, we won't cheat and try and sneak there early. We'll go to the NCR first. Though in all fairness, we're not going to either of those places yet because that is a long way off. Instead, we've got business in Gecko to take care of. And I quite frankly dare anyone to come and attack me at this point, alright? I've actually got myself a properly armed team now. Yeah? You want to give me a go? I thought not. Oh, oh, it's something. A swarm of mantis. Honestly, that's not really worth the waste of ammo. I'm just going to pass that, because that actually gets me a few XP for using my outdoorsman ability. So it's not like I'm losing XP entirely, I'm just saving a bunch of ammo. There we go, 75 XP for successful use of outdoorsman. Honestly, killing the mantis probably wouldn't have been too much more than that. Now, apparently I missed something in this part of the world, which is, in the village, yeah, I actually missed the giant Poseidon oil thing that's right here. I kind of missed that. 
I assume the thing up top in the second area was actually the reactor. No, it's the giant thing with the Poseidon oil sign. That's the thing I want. Though I'm actually going to do myself a bit of Radex right now. Because, yeah, I very much feel like this area is irradiated. And we need to go and do some work in a nuclear power plant that is leaking. And there is actually a keep out radiation sign. And I'm already irradiated. So, plan, do this, then leave, never come back, do the rad away back at Vault City, then we can crack on with no radiation. Right, back to Harold. How are you getting on, Harold? Well, good news, I've got the part. So, I'm gonna go and try and get it installed in the reactor. Okay, so I do need to do that myself, gotcha. Now we just go straight over to the reactor itself. Right, definitely the right decision to do the Radex. I feel like this place has got to be a bit on the irradiated side, and I don't actually know that because I don't have a Geiger counter yet. But I'm just going to assume it is, alright? Because the groundwater is very radioactive. I know that much. So, uh, what have we got over here? Lots of ghouls with guns. Maybe I should put my guns away, I'm not sure. Hello, who are you? Welcome to the Atomic Power Plant. Just a warning to you, if anything goes wrong while you're inside, we're going to blame you. Fair enough. I'm just looking for something. I'm here on Harold's authority. I want to fix your plant for you. Everything's under control. What are you looking for? Reactor control room, supply room, robot control room, or reactor pit? I'm not sure, but reactor control room seems like a good starting point. So that's the door to the right of the one you entered the building through, then through the door at the end, post the yellow security. Oh! Yellow security reactor! That was from the thing back at the... Was it the Den or Klamath? Klamath, I think! I've actually got that! Yes! I actually have a relevant key card! Though apparently some guy called Jeremy also has a key. But that's fine. I can skip that because I've actually got one. Unfortunately, he's assuring me that the background radiation level should actually be pretty low. The reason the groundwater's being affected is because that's where they're actually pumping all the radiation. So the air inside here shouldn't be too bad. And that, I'm guessing, is the reactor pit over there. With a robot that's just bobbling around and making worry noises. Love it. Probably there's a bit of radiation in there, though. Probably don't step in there if I can avoid it. So, he said go to the right. Let's just wander our way through here. Bit of stuff going on in this part of the world. Uh, we just need to find our way to uh, control room. And if I had to guess, there we go. It's actually written on the walls. Lovely. And you need yellow authorization to get through here. Okay, I've been waiting for this. I've got yellow authorization somewhere at the bottom of my inventory. There we go. Yellow reactor key card. So just actually get that set up. And if it's anything like Fallout 1, I simply use key card on door. Okay, use key card on... Okay, where do I use key cards? So, after a couple of minutes of me just trying to insert this card into anything available in this room, I actually went to look this up online, and it turns out the yellow reactor key card does literally nothing in Fallout 2. It's an item that you can pick up in Klamath that does nothing. I need an unrelated yellow pass key that looks identical available in this location to pass this door. So, Fallout 2 was an odd game sometimes. Just a little bit weird and unintuitive in places. So yes, this key does absolutely nothing. Here we go. Just round the corner there is a completely identical object called a yellow pass key, which is different to a yellow reactor key card. This one, this is what I want. That's in this locker just round the corner. So yeah, you can guard your way to fight a Mr. Gunsy and investigate a vertebird and take this item and it does nothing. The actual item you need is just in a cupboard round the corner. That's very odd game. That's very odd indeed. But wait, there's more. There's a blue pass key in this bookshelf in the next room over too. So, okay then, possibly there'll be more as well. That glowing one just wandered off, so check all the other little cupboards here. Nothing there, unfortunately. Right, there might be more yet. No more key cards, but round the back of the storeroom, there's a box of cheesy puffs. A box of cheese-flavoured puffs. They are extremely good. And now I'm trying to remember whether when this game came out... Is that a South Park joke? Was South Park already a thing when this game came out in 1998? I can't remember. This may or may not be a South Park reference. Because that's the weird thing about Fallout 2. Of every Fallout game, this is the weirdest and most meta one. 
And hello, what's that right there? Just noodles. Fine, this is just where there's a bunch of food and whatever. But yeah, there's lots of really weird fourth wall breaking meta humor in Fallout 2. It's kind of strange in retrospect, because it doesn't really show up anywhere else in the franchise. Even in New Vegas, the same team basically dialed it down a bit and put all that stuff behind the optional Wild Wasteland trait. And the guy in the same room, this is Jeremy. So he's got a yellow key, but I've already stolen one from a locker, so we're absolutely fine. Unless, of course, I can get... Hang on, Skeeter. Ooh, that's the guy I need to get on side for the actual fuel cell part. Right. So he's always trying to get me to give him valuable supplies. Uh, then he just pulls the stuff apart and breaks it. I wouldn't trust him to fix a toaster. Yeah, actually, I need the... Hang on. He wanted the super tool kit, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. Do you have one by any chance? Because that'd be great. And yeah, sure, I was just getting something for Skeeter, because I am trying to get something for Skeeter, so what are you actually willing to give me? How the hell did Skeeter get anyone to authorise him getting a part, though? I just hope he doesn't blow anything up this time. Oh well, not my business. Yeah, that part, I need to pick it up. So, do you have a request authorization form? Oh no, I've run into bureaucracy. You could get one from Harold back in the settlement, or from Festus right here in the main reactor control room, I don't care who you get it from, as long as you get it. No request authorization, no parts. Gotcha. So if I need parts to fix this thing, then I'm going to need to speak to Harold about that, or Festus, wherever he is. But, I think as I've got the part from Vault City, hopefully I can skip that. This might be an alternative solution. Oh, here we go. Big book of science. I'll be having that off the bookshelf right next door. Lovely. And Guys, get out of my way, please. I'm ransacking. Well, whatever part I need, it's not here. So, all right, time to head back over to that door. Now I should have authorization to access the control room. So, back to this door. Use yellow passkey on this door, which is, of course, you unlock the door. There we go. I was worried that wasn't going to work for a second there, too. So, I've now got access to the control room. Lovely. And I've also got the blue key, just in case there's a blue door that needs to be opened. And then again, where is the... That's red. So I'd need red to access that, which is, ah, red for the reactor itself. So, ah, hang on. I see something over there. That there is, yeah, the main reactor valve. Now, the game did specifically say earlier it was, yeah, it was Harold. He'd received a report from someone saying, hey, we should turn the main reactor valve. And he said that would cause a meltdown. So that's what we want to turn if we want to destroy the place. I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to get this installed. So either I need Festus to do it for me, or I need to find a red card from somewhere. Though, I'm not sure what the blue one's for. I literally can't see a blue door anywhere. Ah, speak of the devil, there's a red card right here. I'll be having that, thank you. So now, I've got the full set just in case I need those for something. So, one of you guys... Excuse me. Excuse me, Vic. Vic, get out of the way, please. Thank you. One of these guys has got to be Festus. Actually, none of them are important. Possibly Festus is actually in here. So, hopefully this room is safe. Ah, never mind. This must be Festus over here in this little side room. That's good. I'd rather stay out of the red room. That's a bit too close to the reactor for my liking. So, I've got a part you can actually use to fix the reactor. So, yep, yeah, you actually know what the part is. I'm guessing this is Festus. So, are you actually going to be installing this for me? I guess I could install it. I'm certainly the only one that can install it right. Installing this is quite tricky. So, uh, Here's the regulator. I knew I could count on you, presumably Festus. And... Are we actually done? He's still carrying the part. Okay, I'm here, but I'm still not sure that this isn't the right part or that it's not a trap somehow. You know, I'm much too valuable to waste. Maybe I should just let someone else do this later, much later. Okay, Festus, just get on with it, please. It needs to be done right now. You're the only person that can do it, or I guess you're right. I'd better find another way to install the part. Well, I can't without taking a ton of rads, presumably, so uh, please do this. I'm guessing I'm speech rolling right now, and okay, that's got it. Hey, I did it. I really am that good. Excellent. He decided to do it. I'm glad I invested in speech. Otherwise, uh, I'm guessing I would have had to have taken a lot of rads to do that myself. So, job done. 4,250 XP. Nice.
And in addition, Sulik has gained in some abilities. Right, so your companions sort of level up with you. Love it. So the reactor's running pretty good now, could still do with a tiny bit of a tune-up maybe, but I'd say it's a pretty good job all the same. Right, more might need to be done yet, because sure it might be running well, but is it running perfectly clean? Because that's what we need to avoid war with Vault City. I mean the reactor's running, but it could run better. I mean better by a long country mile if we just had a smidge more data. Now if you could get the optimization data, we'd be cooking with gas, you know what I mean. Okay, I'm guessing Vault City or something. Yeah, Vault City's central computer. Ah, that's in the vault. But, if this has done enough to clean up the groundwater, then Senator McClure might be willing to make me a citizen, which gets me into the vault, which means I can get the data, which means I can make this place even better. Love it. Ah, but this is interesting. He's saying there might be another way. So, so far I've just been assuming not a citizen not allowed in, He's saying maybe you could just sneak in, use the holodisc, and then run straight back out again. I wonder if there is a time to do that. Like, maybe there's a time of day when there's a changing of the guards, and like, for a moment, the vault is left unguarded. I don't know. I've not heard anyone say that. I thought it was just impossible. But if he's suggesting it, there's probably a way to make it happen. But because of what I've just done, hopefully I can get myself made a citizen by McClure regardless. And if I do, they'll use less uranium, the core won't leak so badly, Vault City won't have any reason to come exterminators. So, potentially, I've improved the situation, but not quite fixed it. And there we go, got a new data disk, need to use that inside the vault, but first, we've got a level up to do, love it, and, even better, a perk. Okay, awareness, still very, very tempting indeed. Now, better criticals. I've already taken more criticals, so better criticals would certainly be extremely tempting too. Bonus move is very tempting as well. Oh, there's so many things I'd like to take right now. And scout is nice. Scout's nice, but it's very much a nice to have rather than something that's essential. Oh yeah, it's completely down to these three. Awareness, better criticals, or bonus move. You know what? I'm going to take awareness. It'll be nice to know exactly how much health everything's got, rather than just a vague idea of wounded, severely wounded. I'm going to take it. Yep, get it done. Marvellous. Now, speaking of which, let's just get small guns up a tiny bit. Speech can go up a tiny bit too. In fact, you know what? We could just get speech to 100 right now. I feel like that's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, let's just get speech to 100. I like talking my way out of my problems. That's good stuff. Alright, back to Vault City, and once again, I am decently armed and ready to go in case I run into any trouble. But if it's something very minor I can skip, I might well do so just for the Outdoorsman XP. So, anybody want to go? No, I feel like people are keeping their distance now I'm better armed. I'm not sure if that's just random luck or confirmation bias, but it feels like I'm having a much easier time of it since I actually got some good weapons. I do have to wait until morning, however, because of course I've only got a day pass. For now, I think I'm about to become a citizen, however, so that'll be good. And uh, I lost 25. Ah, yes, the Radex has worn off. Fine. Okay, back to the Central Council. Remember, we're not speaking to Lynette, we're speaking to McClure, because he claimed he could make me a citizen. So let's go over to him and... Okay, nothing with him, actually. Fine, I guess we do go and speak to Lynette. Hopefully, she's cool with what I've done. Because she seemed up for, like, you know, murdering everybody. But I've solved this peacefully. But maybe she just won't care as long as there's no radiation in the ground anymore. Ah, hang on. Is the job not actually done yet because the radiation hasn't been fully sorted out? Right. I'm seeing the problem here. And if so, we've got a big catch-22. I can't get to the vault computer until I'm a citizen, but I can't be a citizen until I've sorted out the power plant. Right, how do we sort this out then? Have you resolved the situation? Ah, no, never mind. If I just apologise to her a bit and then move forward, I've taken care of the power plant, you shouldn't have any more trouble with it leaking radiation. Is this good enough for citizenship? So, you disabled their plant? And... Uh, I'm not gonna actually, you know, tell her how it was done. I'm just going to say it's taken care of, because I don't want to get Councillor McClure in trouble, I might need him yet. It is my pleasure to grant you citizenship, complete with privileges and access to our facilities. Nice. Okay, 
I haven't got McClure in trouble because I might need him to optimize the plant yet, but I've got citizenship, which is perfect. Oh, and everyone's greeting me as a citizen. Oh, that's lovely. Now, back to McClure. I've repaired Gecko's plant. So I was worried the radiation buildup might force us to relocate. You are to be commended on a job well done. Hooray for me, and I'm not going to say Vault City prevails. That's a bit weird. I'm just going to say thanks. That's better. But we can do more yet. Let's talk about optimizing the plants. So yeah, let's just get his take on the situation. This data disk, shove it into the Vault City computer. I can make their plant run more efficiently, generate more electricity. They'll be willing to do the trade. Everybody's happy. You have my permission to use the Vault computer and optimize the reactor disk. So now I formally have permission to go in the Vault if I actually needed that. I'm not sure if citizens can just come and go as they please. Now this I've been looking forward to. Into the Vault itself. So hello there. Hi citizen, how may I help you? I'd like to enter the vault, please. Uh, of course, please pass through. Uh, good. Right, before we do that, however, I'd like to actually see what the amenities office is willing to sell. Because this place looks like a big shop and he wasn't willing to sell to me before. So, uh, I want to know what's going on here. Oh, yeah, he's willing to sell to me. He's got a lot of good quality stuff, actually. He's got books. He's got a handful of dollars. Uh, He's got some weapons. Nothing too special, actually. But this is expensive stuff, of course. Including, uh, that's just a 14mm. I've already got that. How much ammo do I have for that, by the way? Do I want to buy the ammo? Because that's actually a really powerful gun. I've got 59 spare shots for that. How much are you charging for that ammo? Because I might be willing to take that off your hands. $400. That's not that bad, to be honest. I might be willing to just buy that. You know what? I'll swap it for a time bomb. Because I really shouldn't handle time bombs. I end up just blowing myself up. Oh, and into the vault we go. Lovely, and I'm guessing it's going to have... Uh, yeah, it's got an identical layout to what we've seen before. The same as Vault 13 and Vault 15 and all of that business. Because back in these days, uh, they all seemed to be built to a standard layout. So they were all pretty much identical. If you found a vault, it always looked the same. So may as well go and meet everybody here. So someone over here in the... Ah, I believe this is the medical area. Because, yeah, there's like a med lab right on the first floor, which I assume is also to function as like quarantine when people first arrive. So, yep, yeah, I'm brand new, just got my citizenship, all of that good stuff. So, this person's name is Phyllis. I'm John, I'm guessing you're a doctor or something. Yes, resident medical assistant. I work for Dr. Troy, love it. And uh, any chance you can actually drain the rads out of me? Because that would be great. Oh, but I might have found a new girlfriend, actually. So apparently, I'm allowed to flirt with Phyllis. Let's see how this goes. So, uh, yeah, she claims it's boring, there's nothing to do. And it seems a shame that a beautiful young woman such as yourself can't find something to do in Vault City. Or someone. And, uh, yeah, can't help but notice you're an attractive young woman. So, uh, how about you and I have dinner? And uh, I'd love to, uh, but I can't. Oh, well. And you know what? She said no. I'm not going to push her. Fair enough. And apparently I might be able to learn more from this terminal if I were to science it. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not very good at science. So, screw it. Let's go and have a chat with Dr. Troy instead. Except, weirdly, he also doesn't seem able to heal my rads. I swear someone mentioned that rads could be healed by this guy, but he doesn't actually seem to be offering that. And uh, I don't recall seeing you around here before you were a citizen. Yep, literally just became a citizen. I'm great. And you're not a Vault City native, though. Ah, I'm still a second-class citizen. Gotcha. And I'm not wanting to tell him straight up because, yeah, I'm a bit concerned about the safety of my village. So, uh, let's see why he wants to know. I'm sorry to pry. I'm just looking for someone who's travelled beyond the walls of Vault City. Ah, do you need something done by any chance? And yes, indeed, a special errand. Give me the details here. So, it's come to my attention there's a new drug in the waste. It's called Jet, I believe. I'm willing to pay $1,000 for a sample of the drug. That's unfortunate. I sold that drug for like $100 a piece to the store just outside the walls because, yeah, before I was a citizen, I wasn't allowed to carry anything into town. That's a shame. Well, if I can find a way to get it past the guard, sure, we might well bring this guy some jet if I run into any. But I'm not going to go out of my way to, like, buy some. I'll just hand it over if I happen to run into some out in the field or something. And having agreed to that, yes... I can actually ask for a radiation. Beautiful. Lean back, we'll hook you up. And there we go. I can actually get rid of rads for free. Now I'm a citizen. Spot on. 
Yep, radiation got rid of. Love it. Now, I was told third level, but I'll check out the other levels first, actually. So, level two. And yeah, this place is just abandoned right now, isn't it? No one actually lives here anymore, so uh, this is all just used for storage. Ah, but the doors are all sealed. That's fine. I should be able to sort that out, especially if, yeah, as I understand it, now I've actually got a set of lockpicks. Let's just actually get those right over here. Get that as to mine. No, no, no. Not there. Keep that active, please. Uh, now, do I need to actually use those on? Or that does nothing? Okay. But if I'm attempting the lockpick, while I've actually got these in my inventory, does that make it... Well, I've definitely picked the lock, so I've done something good. Now, what do all of these here boxes do? Is there anything actually in any of them? And... What is that? Water chips. Well, of course it is. Right, fair enough. So just giant piles of water chips. Right, so every box in here, nothing but water chips. So uh, maybe there's an Easter egg hidden in here somewhere, but I'm not going to go through literally all of it. Unless there are any rooms that look different to the others. So yeah, those are all just boxes around there. I think that was actually... Yeah, these two at the end look a little bit different. So, uh, how about we just check out those two rooms? Because, uh, yeah, there are actual footlockers in there. And one active terminal as well. Can't interact with the terminal that's on. But this here footlocker. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I'll be taking some stim packs. Some money. Some anti-venom and a big book of science. Right, I'm guessing I'm ransacking the doctor's room right now. But screw it, why not? And one more next door. And that is a Cat's Paw magazine, which I believe is useless. A small dusty box. Give me some more details here. A television dinner. You're not sure, but it's definitely not edible. You're not sure if it ever was. Fine, nothing major going on there. So we'll just be taking a little bit of money. That is just some booze, some junk and some new cola. Right, don't really need any of that. In which case, back to the elevator and down to the third floor. And yep, all the same layout as we're used to. Overseer's massive thing up there, but someone actually lives down here. Okay, interesting. First things first, completely rob the place. Because yeah, vault armories uh, can be an excellent source of uh, all sorts of good stuff right here. That, that's $500 right there. That is, ooh, a Geiger counter. Yes, okay. Now that... That is useful. And keep going here. There might be all sorts of useful stuff in all these lockers. Uh, oh, yeah. First aid book. First aid kit. Oh, I'm glad we're ransacking this place. Empty hypodermic needle. So, yeah, we'll just take the actual stim packs. Those are pretty useful. Oh, more Radex, more Radaway, more Anti-Venom. This is perfect because we are about to be going on a long journey south pretty soon. So, uh, having access to all of this stuff... That's just marvellous. You know what? I think I'll take all of this. We can just sell it in the store for caps. Right, may as well go and have a chat to this guy who seems to be not entirely with it. He's using the same model as the drug addicts over in the den. He's shambling around. He seems to think he's on stage right now. So why are they allowing this guy to hang out down here with all the important computer equipment? And uh, he seems... Uh, a little bit unsure about me. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. So, uh, not many people come into the vault. What is it you do here precisely? So, I just keep my eye on things in storage. You're not doing a great job. I've just robbed you blind. Uh, and make sure all the doors stay sealed. Yeah, you've done a bad job there as well. So, they've got spare parts, supplies, and ore. Haven't really seen ore. Ore from Reading. Not so much anymore. Ah, hang on. This is what we actually heard about in the den. The trade between, was it New Reno and Vault City or Reading and Vault City? Anyway, medical supplies for something. So, why not? And, ah, yes, of course. Reading's gone a bit quiet and we're not actually 100% sure why. Fine. We should go and check that out at some point or another. And yeah, the central computer. Which one is actually the central computer? Just over there, it's the talking computer. Lovely. Well, nothing more from him. He said the talking computer. This computer over here seems to be talking. So, uh, let's just have a little investigate of this. You've logged on to the Vault City Central computer. The interface seems relatively easy to understand. Everything seems to be broken down into archives. Okay, so, the big one. 
Vault 13, can you actually give me a map marker? The archive lists only two vaults. Vault 8, this one, and Vault 15, located to the south. Oddly enough, there is no mention of Vault 13. You went to Vault 15's location into your pit boy. Fine, so we know where that is, very close by to the NCR, formerly Shady Sands. But why would this place not have a record of Vault 13 unless someone had actively removed it? 13 and 15 are right next to each other, pretty much, so... Why would you know about one, but not the other? And as for the gank, the guy in the shop was telling the truth. They came out, they used the only one they had, they don't have a spare, so that's all legit. And confirmation once again, Vault 8 received all of the surplus water chips, meant for another vault, meaning that the spare gank presumably went there instead. So, once again, Vault 13, very good lead. And confirmation their reactor's already approaching capacity, Vault City can't expand without more power, so there is definitely a mutually beneficial trade to be done here. In which case, here we go. Gecko Power Plant Disc, insert that, lovely. Efficiency 43%, 75%, plant calibration, something something. Do you wish to optimise? Yes, begin optimization. So, optimization complete, please remove disc. Love it. Ah, but here's interesting. I was just logging off, but... You're about to turn away, you suddenly notice a small picture of a Pip-Boy located beneath the terminal. Next to the picture is a slot that looks about the size of your Pip-Boy. Go on then. What actually happens here? So, a small window opens on the terminal with a smiling Pip-Boy next to it. As you watch, the Pip-Boy starts whistling silently and tapping his feet. A red light is flashing beside the computer slot. Wait... An unhealthy grinding noise comes from the Pip-Boy slot. The Pip-Boy continues to whistle silently and tap his feet. Am I about to explode? Please tell me I'm not about to explode. The Pip-Boy suddenly stops and frowns, an exclamation mark appears above his head, and he starts wagging his finger at you. Okay, try and determine what's wrong here. So, a small display beneath the Pip-Boy states your last scheduled maintenance was 50.352 years ago. The archives are corrupted and need to be reformatted. Do you wish to proceed? Okay, reformatting is generally bad, so I'm going to do it, but I'm going to drop a save first in case this literally corrupts my Pip-Boy and ruins the game. All right, let's do it. Let's reformat the Pip-Boy, assuming that doesn't ruin everything. And uh, reformatting the Pip-Boy. Wait. New California Geographical Archive is being copied into the new Pip-Boy database. Copying Archive, Broken Hills, Gecko, New California Republic, New Reno, Reading, Vault City... So I assume that just actually adds those map markers on, but I already had them, so that's fine. So, that didn't wipe my Pip-Boy of all of its data. Good, good. And one more door over here, of course. This is actually a storeroom as well. Seems to be locked up. Well, not for long. Ah, oh, here we go. We've got ammo, we've got guns, we've got all sorts. So I can just hand the actual ammo over to Sulik, sell the gun, and even more. I oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, and even better, grenades, flamethrower fuel. Don't really need the flamethrower fuel, but I'll take the grenades, thanks. And as far as I can see, nothing else I can do with the overseer's seat or anything like that. Fair enough. On our way, I suppose. Now, as a citizen, I have access to all of the shops. So, let's actually do some selling here. All that stuff I just looted from the vault, I can sell at least some of that to this guy. Though, actually, he's not got much money left, and these guns are... They're worth a lot more than that, but... For Dean's Electronics, I'd be willing to potentially do a trade here. Yeah, for these books. Those are all... Big Book of Science is really valuable. Got it. Right, one gun, crowbar, and a couple of flares for Dean's Electronics and a handful of cash. On top of that, with all those stim packs in my inventory now, I think what we need to do is hand a couple of them over to Sulik. And I've also given him the sledgehammer in case he'd rather use that when he runs out of ammo. Yeah, here we go. I've actually got nine stim packs right now. So I can definitely afford to give him, say, I'll give him two. And I'll give Vic two as well. So they can now actually heal themselves. And actually, Vic still has a tiny bit of the 10mm ammo. The 10mm pistol. So I'll take those back off him too. Give the ammo to Sulik. Sell the pistol. Here we go. This is better. The woman in the small shop down here. $456. Now, this spare 10mm SMG, that's... 
That's a thousand dollars right there. But you haven't really got anything I'd like to trade for. This is a bit of a shame. No one's got enough money to actually buy the stuff I want to sell. So yeah, I need to find someone with five hundred dollars for the time bomb, a thousand dollars for the SMG. I can actually sell the flamethrower fuel to this guy for yeah, just two hundred and fifty dollars. That's absolutely fine. I could exchange for medicine, actually. Might not be the worst thing in the world. But actually, I think the shop at the beginning of town, outside of the city itself, in the courtyard, I think they had a bit more money, actually. Ah, so Harry has a bit of money, but he's also got plenty of weapons in stock and plenty of ammunition, too. That's the... 22. Hang on, is that what my assault rifle uses? No, that's the 5mm. Right, can't remember what that does, but I don't need it. You know what? Actually, all of his Desert Eagle ammo, that's only about $500. So I'm willing to do him a trade for the Time Bomb, because that's about $500 as well. Yeah, I'll just toss it a bit more on top of that, then we'll be in good shape. There we go. Now Vic's much better set up. Plenty of spare ammo for him. And now to spend all day reading books. All sorts of books, in fact. So, uh, Dean's Electronics. Read that. Then the first aid book. Read that as well. On top of that, I've got, yep, two separate big books of science. Lovely. Read that too. And there we go. It's now night. So, one final trip back to Gecko. Should now sort out the problems here. Once and for all, optimise this place, get the offer of friendship from Gecko, take it back to Congressman McClure, these two societies live in peace forever, hooray for Fallout. So one last trip, back to Festus, and here we go. Thanks for getting the data we needed to optimise this leaky old beast. You're a sly one, no denying it, almost as good a job as I could have done myself. Of course, if you actually want to finish the job, just use the disc on the robot control terminal. Understand me? Well, okay then. Okay, fine. I was hoping you might want to do some part of this yourself, but screw you. Actually, you know what? He did install the part after I gave him a pep talk. Fair enough. But if I'm doing that, then I'm robbing you blind first. So, ooh, hello. We have got ourselves rum. Gamma gulp. No, I'm not going to drink gamma gulp. That seems like a bad idea. So I'm guessing this is the robot control room right here. Yeah, so we've got ourselves, yep, someone who's just standing guard. Uh, can I actually open that immediately or do I need to actually use red card on door? I'm guessing I need to use red card on door, that's fine. Use red card, door is now unlocked, in we flipping go. And a second time, oh, I'm going through some form of airlock or something, that's bad. Uh, hello, is it cooler in here lately? I hope not. I imagine I'm taking a lot of radiation right now. Right, this terminal right here, I'm guessing. So, uh-oh. Right, um, I don't speak terminal. So, function. This terminal is designed to coordinate and command a reactor maintenance repair robots. Okay, so reactor maintenance repair robot control terminal. Okay, let's see what I can figure out about all of this. So, oh dear. Right, back out, back out, back out. Can I just use disk on terminal? Yeah, use the disk. And there we go. The optimization procedure was successful. You gain 2,500 experience points. You gain 20 karma. Is this now done? Are we finally actually done with all of this? And on top of that, there's also access to Poseidonet. So let's see if we can access any of that and... Uh, Enter primary security access code sequence. Um, okay. I'll enter the top one. Oops. Uh, second one. And two more attempts. Uh-oh. Well, it's not the order it says. So, two more attempts permitted. Try this one. Okay. So, I tried that one. And now, what's the pattern here? Is there any pattern here at all? Nothing to do with the numbers, three numbers, and also an A. So, secondary access code sequence. Well, I know it's not going to be the one I just went for. So, could be the second one. One more attempt permitted. Right, I'm just going to log off because I can't access this and I don't want to break the power plant. I'm just going to check in with Festus to see if he's got anything to add to any of this. Thanks, let me get back to my important work. Right, so he claims we're done. 
I assume we are done. Over to the pit boy and the status, just to be sure here. Yes, indeed, the power plant has been optimized. Also, I've now got a Vault City travel log. Okay, ah, information. Right, so what can we learn from all of this? So some background information, but some of it we already know. Reading's a mining community specifically for gold ore. I'm not sure why Vault City needs gold, but apparently they're willing to trade for it. Not much information known. There's a mayor and a town council, but we also know they've run into trouble at some point. And New Reno, same business. Gold ore for medical supplies. Over in New Reno, however, no central government, no law enforcement whatsoever. Right, so just a whole bunch of crime. Still, this does give us an idea for the scale of what we're talking about here. So, Redding's a few hundred people, New Reno a few thousand, but the New California Republic, that now numbers in the tens of thousands. And as for Broken Hills, Uranium Ore, Highly Radioactive, Ghouls, Humans and Mutants, and yes indeed, a mutant serves as first citizen, who of course, if you've played New Vegas, you'll probably be familiar with, but I won't spoil it just in case. But yeah, I can't help but know who that's going to be ahead of time. But what have you, we'll get to them when we get to them. While I'm here though, I should actually go and see Gordon. Because this was his idea. We've optimised the plant, we've fixed the plant, we've got McClure on side. If there's anyone who might have a view as to how to actually make this happen once and for all, it's probably him. And even better, the survival gear locker, this place has got a good amount of money. In fact, he'll sell me all the 14mm he's got for the same amount as he's willing to pay for the 10mm SMG. So that seems like a good deal to me. Well, he seems to think his plan's coming to fruition, but he's not actually offering any further advice. He's just glad everything's worked out as he wanted it to. So, one final visit back to Vault City here, just to check in whether I need to actually, you know, confirm anything about the trade deal or any of the rest of it. And yep, repaired Gecko's plant. That's already taken care of. Do we actually need to make the trade deal a thing that happens, or is that just going to happen by itself now everything's been optimised? Because McClure doesn't seem interested, Gordon doesn't seem interested, it's marked a completed quest for both Gecko and Vault City, so I'll go and have a chat to Lynette just in case. And no, I could shop in Dr. Troy, but I don't want to do that, I'd rather have the thousand dollars off him if I ever run into any jets, so okay. I guess these societies are just going to trade now, though I haven't actually personally arranged it. Maybe we can assume that as McClure's on board, he'll just make it happen now it's done. And now I'm a citizen, the bartender's willing to be a bit more polite, but honestly, he's not telling me anything I don't already know. McClure and the first citizen occasionally butt heads, we knew that already. So, we've got good news here. With the actual Geiger counter, I can verify how many rads I've got on me. And that is currently zero. So I'm absolutely fine. I don't need to bother going to the vault to get myself healed up. Everybody's full health. Everybody should be okay on rads. In which case, put the Geiger counter away for the time being. Get my gun set up right there. Use the rifle as my primary weapon. Absolutely lovely. Right. So where are we going next? The thing is, we don't have a firm lead at this point. We now know the location of Vault 15, which is going to be, yeah, right here, very close by to the New California Republic. So Vault 13 is just going to be right over there. But the actual flask, which we're supposed to be following up on, could be anywhere, to be honest. It could be Broken Hills, or New Reno, or Redding. But Redding actually seems like, yeah, it's a fair bit closer. So I guess we could actually start heading in that direction, as we've not really got any reason to favour any society over the other. But if I'm going to Reading, I kind of may as well nip back to the den, but there's no point going there until I've got the super toolkit to swap a gecko for the car, and I still don't have that, unfortunately. So in which case, looks like Broken Hills is probably going to be the closest. Well, we may as well see how well my new loadout's working. Let's start heading in that direction, because bear in mind, uh, this is actually over open ground, not across mountains. So as a result of that, actually, we should be able to move much faster than the journey between the Den and Modoc, because, uh, yeah, though we're over slightly uneven ground, it's nowhere near as mountainous, so we're actually moving pretty fast, and uh, something wants to take me on, and... Okay, we got ourselves a band of slavers. They're at weirdly long range, but that's fine. I'm good at range. So the slaver's taken a shot at me and immediately missed. I, meanwhile, can hit him 95% accuracy. So how about we just shoot you for 18 hit points of damage? 
By the way, I can now actually see precisely what you're wielding, health, all the rest of it. So, hit for 18, he's still got 32 hit points, so go on then. Just actually shoot him one more time. At this range, we have a significant advantage, and okay... You're supposed to be using the 10mm SMG. Did I not tell you to switch over? Well, you know what? Vic's actually using his gun, which is nice. Those guys are now shooting each other, which is marvellous. They're just running forward and... Yeah, you haven't figured out how to actually use your gun yet. I need to tell you to go over to your most powerful weapon. Okay, fine. What have you? This guy is... He's almost dead, isn't he? Yes, he's very almost dead. So just take a shot at him. 92... And down he goes. And then you've also got a gun. Ooh, you've actually got yourself a shotgun, in fact. All right, you know what? Let's actually take a good shot at you. Go over to 14mm pistol. So one shot against this guy. 74% chance to hit. I'll take it. That was a hit for 22. Not bad at all. And they are struggling to hit Sulek. And Slaver has actually taken a shot. I was hit for 12. Not that bad, really. Sulik's just actually drawing the attention of the melee lads. Yeah, this is working. So he's down to 27 hit points. So I could take four steps towards him and go for an aimed shot. Or I could go over to... Yeah, go over to the rifle. The rifle's better at long range, I think. So yeah, 95. So I should be able to easily two-shot this guy. 15... And, oh, I got really unlucky on the damage range there. Boo. So they're going for Sulik, but they're struggling. Vic, why didn't you go for the guy who's almost dead? Dear, oh dear. Actually, I've got such high sequence, I'm straight back in. And I can just take these guys out from ridiculously extreme range. 80%. He's on the other side of the field. But actually, that was an unlucky miss right there. Sulik should be fine. He's actually running. Slaver critically missed and was hit randomly. Somehow he just managed to shoot himself or something. Vic's doing good work too. Oh yeah. My new loadout. This is doing the job right here. So how much health do you actually have? 30. So... Hang on, what's the damage range on this thing? I think I want to go over to the pistol just to guarantee I get the kill. So, that's only 68% actually. Yeah, go back over to the rifle. So, I need to be a bit closer for the pistol. But with two hits with this, we should be able to... That's 15. Oh, it's going to be really close. And, yep, yeah, we got lucky on the damage range there. That was 17. He dies. And at this point, it's nothing left but a handful of people with spears. And those are very, very inaccurate indeed. He's not going to be able to do much. Okay, so this has gone spectacularly well. Just shoot that guy. And you're badly damaged. And you are now dead. Sule, just finish off the guys down on the ground, please. Love it. And there we go. We've now actually wiped out an entire group of slavers. Like seven people, three of whom had guns. And not terrible guns. And we've barely taken any damage. Oh, my new loadout is working well. And that's a 1,000 XP right there. And in addition, some of you guys are going to have some good ammo on ya. Lovely. Including, ooh, Molotovs. I'll be having that, thank you. And every one of these 10mm SMGs, that's a $1,000 right there. This is a good way of getting rich. And there's some jet. That's another $1,000. And hello, is this a shotgun by any chance? Yeah, this is a shotgun. I'll be having that too. You know, I could just turn around right now and hand over that jet for $1,000 to watch his face in Vault City, Dr. Troy. But you know what? I don't think I want to do that, no. Though, Sulik, me and you need to have a chat. Please use best weapon. 10mm SMG. There we go. And as for the shotgun, range of 30, damage of 15 to 25. Not bad at all compared to... 12 to 22 for this pistol. So that thing is very powerful, albeit low on the range side. But actually, better than my pistol, only just. This pistol is a really short range thing, so it doesn't really suit the fact I start 10 million miles away from the battle. The rifle, however, loving the range on that. And honestly, I see no reason why we shouldn't just camp here for a couple of days, just healing up, because Suluk took a few knocks during that fight, mainly because he decided to use a small knife rather than the gun that I gave him, together with giant piles of ammunition for it. There we go, three days later, drop a quick reload, and everything is looking good. That is, yeah, 
pretty good stuff here, I'd say. We are now able to murder the slavers that have been causing us so much trouble. We are well set up. We are good to go. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'd say that is enough for now. We have proved that our new loadout is pretty decent stuff. And that means we are ready to fight our way south to Broken Hills to run into what I strongly suspect is going to be a familiar face to those of you who have played New Vegas. That will be coming up next week. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true does, and this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves. I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.